If you think you're having a bad day, try to compare it to these folks, who in 79 AD experienced a degree of incineration during a volcanic eruption that was so pronounced, their brains literally turned into volcanic glass. Yep, you heard that right. Whilst many of us are familiar with the horrors of Pompeii, that was only one of four settlements that were affected by the eruption of Mount Vesuvius. The citizens of each of these towns were completely ignorant to the phenomenon known as a pyroclastic flow, and they would suffer immensely as a result of that. You might have seen some of the truly horrifying pictures taken of the plaster casts, which immortalised these people in their final moments, with even their expressions recreated due to the calcification that had occurred over the centuries, forming a type of protective shell, within which the body would decay, leaving a void that humans post 1800s have been filling up with plaster to recreate the agony suffered by those poor people for all of us sick modern folk to marvel at. But it appears the carnage doesn't stop there, as this discovery is truly something that is beyond horrifying in its own right. So let's take a look into the vitrification that occurred to the tissue of the victims of the notorious 79 AD eruption of Mount Vesuvius. It's amazing how new horrors that occurred during the destruction of Pompeii, Herculaneum, Oplontus and Stabiae are still being discovered, even to this day, with findings relating to the vitrification of human tissue being announced this year. During the descent of a pyroclastic flow, one man's brains had been burnt at such a high temperature before quickly cooling that it was turned into a form of glass. A pyroclastic flow, for those unfamiliar with it, is basically an event where the volcano releases noxious clouds consisting of superheated debris that is made up of solidified lava pieces, volcanic ash and hot gases that can reach a peak speed of up to 700 kilometers per hour or 434 miles per hour. So you can see why this vitrification occurred, as anybody in the path of one of these flows who wasn't buried by it would have been scorched at temperatures as high as 700 degrees Celsius or 1300 degrees Fahrenheit before it moved on to do the same thing to anything else in its path. Vesuvius is a pretty damn scary volcano, I'm not going to lie. In 79 AD, most bodies at Herculaneum were swiftly reduced to piles of ash. But along with this, human tissue was also transformed into volcanic glass by the event in a process known as vitrification, which as you might imagine is the formation of glass when tissue has been burnt at high heat. In this case, the vitrification seemed to have only occurred to the brains of the victims, and the study has some truly horrifying pictures of the glassy remains of what was once some fella's thinking parts. Youch. Scientists then attempted to find vitrified remains elsewhere on the bodies of those unfortunate and or foolish enough to remain in the vicinity of Vesuvius during this eruption. Glassy material wasn't found anywhere else in the bodies, being confined to occurring only to the brains. Along with this, we have some fascinating terms used to describe the effects of the pyroclastic flow when it descended and made contact with these unfortunate people. One of which is the vaporization of bodily fluids or a solidified spongy mass entrapped within the chest bones of one victim. Oh, by the way, sorry to those poor people who are watching this and eating at the same time. It was originally expected that the brains of the victims would have been saponified, which to explain literally means made into soap after the formation of a metallic salt from a fatty acid. But alas, this was not to be. Instead, the glassy remains were what was left behind, leaving Romans to find soap from other sources. Studies suggest the temperature of these pyroclastic flows were around 520 degrees Celsius, or 960 degrees Fahrenheit, in this particular area when it struck. And what a terrifying sight it must have been. Though unrelated, I wanted to touch a little more into the tragedy of a body found in Pompeii, dubbed the Shackled Slave. Yep, that term in itself is enough to know exactly where I'm heading here. I can't imagine what it was like to be in this guy's shoes in the final hours leading up to his demise. I can't picture the horror and panic of being shackled to a wall, seeing everyone outside scrambling and screaming in panic, and hearing blast after blast as Mount Vesuvius roared forth violently, episodically exploding time and time again before the final one rung out, which released the pyroclastic flow that would inevitably end this poor guy's life where he'd then be found 1800 years later, his body face down on the cold floor. Well, I mean, it wasn't cold when the flow passed through here, but you, you get my point. I know I'm sick, but to be fair, the dude could have been a cold-blooded murderer, or maybe he was just one of the many peasants or slaves caught up in the tyranny of my lead-affected ancestors, 
who did some pretty outrageous things and were some of the cruelest to exist. But as we all know, human depravity is not limited to one group, and it seems to be an inherent trait to our species to counteract brilliance with unbridled malevolence. Yin and yang in action, I guess. But back to the point, the fact is that this eruption led to the death of 16,000 people in the surrounding area. And the worst part about this is, we still didn't learn our freaking lesson, even 1900 years after this event had occurred. If you've watched my video that covers the literal snake invasion that occurred on the Caribbean island of Martinique during the eruption of Mount Pelee, link in the description, you'd know that over 30,000 people met their tragic end literally within a minute or two after the descent of a pyroclastic flow, which buried the city, who by the way had ample time to evacuate, but were stifled in their attempts to do so by ignorance and bureaucracy, among other things. Even the frickin' animals were smart enough to get the hell out, and that's why the town was literally swarmed by pit vipers, poisonous centipedes, and insects that included red and yellow ants, all of which wrought absolute terror to the entire town, killing some and injuring many others in the process. This event was history repeating itself, albeit on a much larger and worse scale, with some snakes thrown in for good measure. And it's why volcanology is so damn important, as all of these deaths were entirely preventable. Thanks for watching.